prejudice hai it is tapping into that the clever guy is and trump is a very clever man you can't build an empire like he has without being a clever man mr modi is a very clever man they are all populist nationalists because whenever you attack them in any way they say they throw you <laughs> moment you attack there is a standard format of all the populist nationalists the moment they are questioned you are anti national and once you are anti national then you are in big trouble then what do i do because you occupy the space so i think how do you negotiate it how do you challenge it is a big challenge of our time not easy uh, in bajrangi bhaijaan there is a great dialogue of salman khan कि प्यार बांटना बहुत मुश्किल है नफरत फैलाना बहुत आसान एंड दैट्स एग्जैक्टली व्हाट इट इज दिस एंटायर फेक न्यूज इंडस्ट्री दिस क्लोज टू इंडस्ट्री अलाउज यू टू स्प्रेड हेट इट अलाउज यू टू स्प्रेड हेट इंस्टेंटली बाल ठाकरे का पेटर्न चला गया नाउ एनीवन कैन डू इट बिकॉज यू जस्ट नीड अ एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट लाइक दिस सेंड अ व्हाट्सएप मैसेज गोस आउट टू थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पीपल हु इज गोइंग टू चेंज सॉरी दैट्स द चैलेंज ऑफ आवर टाइम I uh, I want to ask this question uh, on behalf of our students here yeah? because they get to hear your political views on TV but they don't get to know how you handle post to demonization as an icon of a specific type of journalism which is bold and courageous enough to ask and which is not averse to conversation and discourse so in newsroom when you handle other journalists uh, you know different Uh, mindsets, ideologies, different ways of working. I'm sure you would have faced this quite frequently on social media, the trolls and other phenomena you face in public. Lot of uh, you know anger against you occasionally. So how do you personally handle this? And uh, you know what do you have to share with the students over here? You know sometimes in the newsroom now I'm like Bapu's three bandas. Suno mat, dekho mat. Calm the man. You know, you, you shut your ears, shut your eyes, speak not, see not, think not. Almost, because newsrooms have become polarized like society. The same polarization that we see in society is also there in the newsroom. A mandir ke issue ko le lo. The way the Ram Mandir issue is played up in newsrooms. You know, as if the person who is sitting in the studio represents all Hindus. and the muslim who sitting in the studio represents all muslims and even there we have stereotype them so on the same issue once i saw asad in oic three days in a row on our, on our hindi channel to maine pucha yaar ye oic kisre din lagatar usi subject pe sir wo oic hai na jab wo aata hai hamare pr ki padti hai so if you are going to reduce if you are going to reduce serious debate टू टी आर पी इसकी टी आर पी आप टी आर पी क्यों बनते हैं और वो भी है कि ओवेसी की दाढ़ी पहनते टोपी है शेरवानी में है सो ही टिपिफाइज अटन मुस्लिम और वो भी क्यों सर कई लोग टीवी रिमोट पर ये म्यूट पर देखते हैं विदाउट वॉइस कम से कम उनको जब इमेज दिख गई ओवेसी की वो टीवी देखेंगे Which is using OAC, who is happy to be used. Ek hi seat hai uski. One MP, one member party has become a national TV face because he looks like a Muslim. So think about the poor Muslim like my friend Kasim Bai here. You will not be called on TV. You are too soft spoken. You don't look like a Muslim in TV terms. But that is what we have reduced serious issues to. So you know my worry for young journalists is that you will fall for these caricatures or you will be pushed into them and you must resist it. You must make every effort to resist it. I often say you know you just have to move away from this age of extremes. We have to find the middle ground. That's where I think the battle will be fought against those two. In the age of extremes, emotions very difficult to challenge them. OVC knows how to get his audience going. Islam khatre mein hai. Dusri taraf, our dear friend from Gujarat, Pravin Togare, will say, Hindu khatre mein. And you know, it makes for probably riveting TV drama. But does it add to our knowledge? Does it truly inform us? It may entertain us. But news was not meant for entertainment. News was meant to provide information, knowledge. But when we don't become a knowledge-based society and make news, particularly TV news, entertainment, then the post-truth society gets even more powerful. So I think we face a huge challenge at the moment, 
and I'm not so sure what is the answer. There are no ready answers apart from saying that at the end of the day, the only thing all of us in this room need to live with is our conscience. You only have to answer your conscience. That's all. No, you don't have to answer anyone. And if you answer your conscience, I think somewhere you will find some solutions out of this terrible world that we see around. I think it's leading philosophy and uh, we can't have... I'm preparing my retirement plan for journalism. You see, when I retire from journalism, I have to give reasons I retired. Why did I quit journalism? So, I'm, one, every time I come to a gathering like this, I add one more reason. <laughs> okay, I found my reasons. <laughs> Uh, but Dr. Singh, if uh, in fact on this note, wow. taking this forward, since this is where we do zone of philosophy, what do you think are society's expectations when we talk about, journalistically speaking, post truth, how we handle how society and politics is? What do you see as lacking or is the strength of journalism in India as a leader, as an every leader, as an observer? What's your take? What are your expectations as, in, as societies as you see that we are either fulfilling or not and where it should be heading? Uh, I'll come to this question a little later because the question that you asked about how to negotiate it. Uh, as a concerned citizen of this country and a member of this humanity, uh, there are two, three ways. One way is that to counter the proliferation of lies, propaganda, or so called post truth. One of the ways is that society will have to go back to literary truth. And literary truth basically is the truth that does not claim anything to be true. Literary truth is what in Sanskrit tradition was Kavyasat or poetic truth in the Greek tradition. It was that it puts all sides of certain phenomena. It is for the society to take a view. That is what, that is what happened when in England, the Gosson called poets as the five words, gestures and interpreters of commonwealth and said that they should also be driven out. And said poetry is the mother of lies. Said he said that poetry does not tell lies because poetry never claims that it tells the truth. If you claim that I am telling the truth, then you can pin me down and say I, that you are a liar. Problem is that you journalists, you claim that you tell the truth. <laughs> the, the politicians say that their political truth is the Brahmin truth. <laughs> and now the fight is between political truth and journalistic truth. We are at the back. <laughs> We, we are not even appendix to your, your, your power that both these peas have politicians, press people, police people. Mm -hmm. so, so this is this literary truth that does not claim to be true and leave for the people to fight. Only thing is that it needs time. That time people do not have. Another solution that the best minds, the Greek and Indian tradition had, that is if something is true or not, that is to be seen in the light of ethical framework. We love to lose point of reference and we do not want to see anything under any ethical framework. What is ethical framework? Ethical framework is that your truth as fact is not enough or it is not good if it causes any kind of violence. That is why truth has value. If my truth takes a life, then that truth is worse than the lie that shapes a life. <laughs> the, 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 that is truth and value. The, the day we have been, we have only to it, not that you are not aware at the end list, not that politicians are not aware, not that other segments of society are not aware, but deliberately we have missed or misled the people from the point of reference to truth and deliberately we have detached truth from ethical framework. It should be for welfare of larger section of people, otherwise truth has no value. Professor mentioned just now, just very briefly, mentioned press, police, 
and politicians in the same breath. Right? Now, you see, that is where the, and he said the truth of the politician versus the truth of the mail of the press. Professor's truth is at the back. Professor's truth is at the back. But, but you see, what has happened as a result, that is the reason why one of what has happened in a pros to society, look at Donald Trump is a good example, Narendra Modi less so. They target the press all the time. Because what is the larger goal? To finish the credibility of the press. You are not press. We are called prostitutes today. And look at the language that Trump uses. CNN, fake news. Every channel which questions Trump is fake news. He wants to demolish the press as an institution. So that then there is only one truth left. The politicians truth. Police to aapke kabje nahi hai. Police to wahi karengi jo aap jate ho. Police ki truth to chodo. Then there is only the politician. The professor's truth he is admitting is at the back. It's, you know, it, 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 it's a back venture. Should come in. But even the media, the, the so-called truth of the press has been systematically demolished by politician after politician in this country, in America, to ensure that the press becomes irrelevant. The idea, and that is the danger I see. In calling us prostitutes again and again, people today in this room will say, after I leave, yes, sir, media sir, became away. 100% you will see this. And that is because you are saying... Sabere Mene Sunami Ka. Ah, Sabere Sunami Ka. Because there are people who are saying this. When my, again my leader, it's again, we believe our leaders more than we believe our citizens in this country. As if the leaders are the virtuous road hai. Ki wo kuch galat nahi kar sakte. The leader is above all reproach. And therefore, the media becomes the soft target in this whole post truth debate. Look at the way Trump goes for the media. But to the credit of the American media, and that is the difference between them and us. They are hitting back. CNN the reporter nahi kata hai ki, in fact, he is seeing this as an opportunity that I will take you all. In this country, we are afraid. There is a, so the other culture that makes us even more prone to post truth uh, in this country is the culture of fear. This country is fearful. I mentioned it in the earlier talk. Whether you are a celebrity film star, whether you are a celebrity sports star, whether you are a big editor, whether you are a big judge, whether you are a bureaucrat, you don't want to challenge the system here. Sab darte. We are a conformist society as Orient. We are very, very conformist. And we are, uh, you know, we believe in respecting aage se chali aati hai, bade logo ne jo ka hai. That's how we think and we are. I think that's... Uh, the, the point that you mentioned basically, uh, the fear, because uh, you asked me to say something about word of and then, but I don't think I'm competent enough to, uh, to say anything about that. The fear I can, I can share with you. The fear is that exponential fast pace of ICT, media, multiple new platform that will come into existence, replacing the existing ones. The greatest crisis before humanity would be, greatest crisis that I see looming large would be that there will not be people who will have either time or father of discussion to authenticate or to make difference between good and bad. Truth has fact, truth has in the name of faith, truth has been. Therefore, the, the possibility that I see that as you have dishwashing machines today, there may be time after five years with this explosion of all this, you may have fed authenticating machines where the news will come, you go with your mobile, you will put it inside and you will find out whether this, this is... I think artificial not. intelligence is capable of doing that already. Maybe, you know, in, in, in the next 20, 30 years, if, if there is no definite change in human consciousness, I, 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 I believe it should happen. If, if it is not going to happen, then neither press, nor politicians, nor professors, but the uh, <laughs> truth, truth authenticating machines will tell, AI will tell that this is, and when that will happen, that will perhaps not be a very good day for humanity. But that's already happening. You know, today, today, the news hierarchies in 
some are decided by algorithms. Which story will trend on Twitter? What is the main story on Facebook? What will come on your news feed is being decided by algorithms by someone sitting in San Francisco. And as we saw in the US elections itself, it is possible to completely, in a way, undermine the entire electoral system as well as to what will trend. And many of our news channels and newspapers now have fact-checking teams. You know, we haven't yet gone to the machines, but we are already almost getting there. The next stage is the machine. But you know, I think we have suspended the power. One of the great powers is the power of being skeptical. Earlier I felt there was a greater skepticism. Today, that power of skepticism, which is so crucial, I believe, to critical thinking is being suspended. You know, we, uh, I'm sorry again to use Mr. Modi as an example because he's a good example <laughs> of how successful, of how successful, of how successful you can be, how you can fool the people all the time in a way. From Kushpesh Pant's home state when Uttarakhand floods happened, Modi he lands there, and India's biggest newspaper, Times of India, makes it out to be as if Modi in 24 hours has rescued 60,000 people. <laughs> Rambo, the headline was Rambo. See, because we also have to magnify the story. So it suits us because we are going to magnify a story. It suits the politician who also wants to say, I come in, I will rescue people. Fact was that Mr. Modi did what every other chief minister was also doing there, trying his best, good luck to him, to help the people of Gujarat, many of whom were start to come back. But it wasn't some Rambo-like operation where 60,000 people were being thrown out. It was again an example of fake news in a post truth world. But there was very little attempt made by the journalists of India's leading newspaper to show some skepticism. Instead, we are like stereotypes, we are like stenographers. Oh, Usne Kadia, 60,000 have been saved in a day, we will be tied down headline. 60,000 people in Rambo like operation. So we ourselves are to blame. We as journalists are to blame for suspending this, for the manner in which we have suspended disbelief at times. And believe whatever happens around us. And that has allowed the populist nationalists across parties in a way. It's not just that Mr. Modi does it, I'm sure it's done by state chief ministers as well. They are creating this world as if, you know, they are the fix it. They will solve all our problems. But one day it will unravel. One day all this world of make believe and if you only rely on Jugaad, if you only rely on Jumla, one day people will start asking questions. That way and, and frankly, much more than Indian urban middle class, the poor ask it. Because they get hit. In demonetization, eventually the questions that will be asked is by the man who lost his small and medium and micro level industry. It's not asked by the rich. There, Prime Minister and many people were right. Koi bada aadmi line mein nahi khada raha. Aadmi jo khada rehta hai, us line mein after demonetization was the chota aadmi. Aur wo aap sabal puchne laga hai. Ki batai hai, mujhe kya mila. That is, that man has the capacity. I've seen it traveling across this country. The small man, when he rises, usko koi nahi taakat loog sakte. Wo hai, amari ek taakat is desh mein hai. Jab chota aadmi apni badi awaz kare na, वो बस आप समझ लीजिए आपको बुरा बिस्तर बांधकर घर था। That's that's the thing and that is what so there is a limit to fake news. There is a limit to what post truth can do. It can you can fool some people some of the time. You can't fool all the people all the time. You have to at the end of the day show the results on the ground. That's that's what is the I hope will help us eventually the sensibility of the average man, the common man's intelligence. कि मैं लाइन में क्यों खड़ा रहा यार? अगर पैसा मिले मैं आप लाइन में ही आएगा पंद्रह लाख कहाँ पर? They ask questions eventually. Well, I agree with you on most of the points. I'd like to say that we have Sheila Ben here from Channel X now, one of the most senior journalists. Manish Mehta from Divyabaskar.com and Raj Goswami from Divyabaskar. So everybody faces more or less the same thing. So I would like to ask Dr. Singh, why are people losing faith in Indian media? What do you, is it just the political lies? Is it something, you know, when you look at it philosophically, are we doing something 
wrong or not doing something right or what are people's expectations that we are not delivering. The reason why we are debating this today is that there is something that people do not feel is right. What is that? Uh, uh, I personally believe that uh, Indian society as said in general uh, which uh, you may call common people, I, I have a word for that, that is Lok, Lok Samaj. On an average, this society had, has had faith in certain institutions. This society did not have so much faith in the political system after 1960s. After 1960s, the faith in the political order was lost. Despite all the failings by certain industry, society had faith in teachers. Society had tremendous and still has faith in religion. So wherever there are complaints, it is because of the faith that they have deposited in the institution of journalism. And this is the burden on the institution of journalism. <laughs> now, why? Because Politics is Machiavelli. If politicians are behaving in a certain way, I believe that uh, in, from beginning to end it has been like this. The grandfather of journalists was Narad. <laughs> Narad, the most enlightened person, most educated, Shastraved, Arnaved, but he was to to report the things of this world to that and that world to this, he was put in the category of negative category. Now, like you just say, this person is not that reason, 